I'm Chloe, and I don't have a fancy click of things, you might have to bear with me. Um, so, I have been in Madagascar for the past three months. I got back on Friday, so I, ha I was just saying, I haven't spoken like complex English in a while <laughs> as an English teacher. I obviously speak a lot of Malagasy when I'm away, so I'm just like constantly translating at the moment because it hasn't been long since I've been back, so bear with me if I do stumble over my words. But yeah, I founded TSAP Travel technically in July 2021. Um, but we officially launched in Madagascar on the 17th of August last year and we are igniting change, delivering impact and leaving a legacy in Madagascar. Um, you might be surprised to hear, I've never actually stepped foot in Tana. Um, I am predominantly based in Nosy Bay, Madagascar and have explored some of the north um, and I'm going to tell you basically how TSAP Travel exists, what we do um, and show you some clips of the documentary and I'll point you in the direction to watch the full thing. I just wanted to give a bit more context to what we did, um, especially over the past two projects, because things are changing and evolving all the time. So the beginning. So this is me, 19-year-old me, bless her. Um, she didn't really know anything back then. This was before I got on my first of three flights in 2019 to go to Madagascar. And I feel like everybody has these stories of loving it. I did not love it. I was so incredibly hot. I cannot even explain to you how hot I was. Like, it was horrible. It was the most uncomfortable thing. I was a really, 91 for me was a really picky eater. So you can imagine going to Madagascar like probably wasn't the best thing. And I don't think anybody thought I was gonna last five minutes, let alone five weeks. But those five weeks actually turned into three months and I was devastated when I had to come back home. Um, I went as a volunteer to teach English as a foreign language with Frontier. Um, couldn't really teach English as a foreign language, couldn't have told you what a past participle was. I'm sure many of you can't either, it's very complicated. Um, and I started meeting lots of local people after I got over like the shock of being like scared and in a developing country and like not eating for like three weeks. Um, I started meeting people and they were like, Chloe, you're great, we love you, but you're going to go home in five weeks and we're going to wait for the next Vaza to come and we don't care about you that much because you're here, you're doing a great job but actually we're just waiting, waiting for the next person and I, I didn't like that, I didn't like this idea of like they're constantly relying on this influx of volunteers on these sometimes white saviours, people that probably were just as knowledgeable as me people were like oh I'll go and do this great thing, I'll go and teach English as a foreign language even though I really didn't know anything so this is me, not my proudest picture, but one I always show. As an organisation, we don't work with children, and that's really important to me. We don't foster relationships with children, we don't focus our community projects around children, because it's just not a good idea. That, uh, those attachment relationships that you break when you walk away are so impactful, even though we don't realise it at the time. But all of these are pictures from my first trip in Madagascar back in 2019, when I was very naive, 19 turning 20. Um, and here are some Madagascar facts that I'm sure all of you know, but I'm going to go over them quickly. So most people in Madagascar live off less than £2 a day, which isn't, isn't enough. I did some research over the past year, and for somebody to live like a good quality of life in Madagascar, their wage should be about £3.60 an hour, which really does not compute to current circumstances. It's a country that's reliant on tourism, particularly in those way, which is where I'm based, it's very reliant on tourism. No education is free in Madagascar. The government love to tell you that education is free in Madagascar. It's not, it's not free at all. And even if you find somewhere where school fees are free, you have to pay for everything else. And there's no form of social protection. If a Malagasy person works for a big business or a hotel, there is some social protection, but it's so, so few and far between. It just really doesn't exist like it should. So, here are some things that really annoy me about voluntourism and some organisations. Um, and these have come up in, even just in my recent trip. It's like we build schools when 94% of teachers in Madagascar are unqualified. And building a school doesn't mean education is free. Because you have to staff that school, they need books, they need resources, they need all of these things. But a lot of organisations will go and build schools. And I'm sure they're amazing. And with the right infrastructure, they could be incredible. But from what I've seen and from people that I've spoken to, unfortunately, this isn't always the case. I know lots of people that run marine projects without educating fishermen on how to sustainably fish. Fishing is a massive thing in Madagascar, 
particularly in Nosy Bay, but as you know, in other regions in the world as well, in the south and in the north, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of fishing projects, that, there's a lot of marine projects that happen, a lot of diving projects, a lot of renewing coral reefs and things like that. But we know 90% of the plastic in the ocean is because of fishermen. It's because of these fishing the, the fishing projects that happen, and nobody's educating people around that and how to sustainably fish. And we also deliver conservation projects without tackling the poverty that's impacting conservation. The deforestation that's happening in Madagascar, the trees that are being cut down, the mangroves that no longer exist because people don't know how to or can't afford to buy gas stoves. And I'm not saying that's the answer, but also the reason mangroves are being cut down is to be used to cook because they have no other option. It's cheaper, it's more affordable, but we know it's not sustainable. So what we do... So we match student and graduate talents with impoverished community needs. We're all about knowledge exchange, and one day, for me, true knowledge exchange means enabling young people to come to, my, to, come to England and actually impact our communities in the same way that we go and impact theirs. And to me, that's what true knowledge exchange means, and that's a real goal of mine, is to eventually, the same way we bring volunteers, or we call them change makers, to Madagascar, we want to bring Malagasy change makers to England and have that true dual impact. And the idea is community is then supported through knowledge exchange programmes and we create global change. I'll talk more about our projects later on. But just to hopefully entertain you all, we did film a documentary whilst I was in Madagascar last year and it's called Fihavanana and we took a long time deciding on the name. And the name in Malagasy means solidarity, goodwill, community, togetherness, friendship. And that is what we're all about at TSAP Travel. Um, Jamel, who you're going to hear from in a minute, is the reason why TSAP Travel exists. I met him in 2019. I taught him English, and I say taught because I wasn't a very good English teacher. And every time I went to teach English, him and his brother Nax would ask for my phone because I had mobile data and they wanted to watch the football. And every English class, that's what they did. They communicated, and Jamel's English, as you'll see in a minute, is very good, with a very good French accent on there as well. Um, and I landed in Madagascar, and I knew nothing once again, shall we say, last year. And it was really him who spearheaded a lot of what we did and a lot of what we do. Um, and I never planned on teaching English as a foreign language again, but I did put some effort in. I got my TEFL qualification, which means I'm qualified to teach English. Um, and I got some other qualifications as well to support me in teaching English so that, so that I could, so that I could be knowledgeable. Um, and that's how this whole thing started uh, one day in August last year was when Jamel and I met. And you're going to hear from him now and what some of his aspirations are as well. Hi. Well, my name is Jamel Carlitos. I am a very simple young Malagasy boy. I'm 20 years old and I am studying development at the university. It's an online university which allows me to study at the same time and so I can work. Well, the job that I do actually is I am teaching English and a lot of subjects like philosophy, English, French and uh, history, geography in uh, high schools and college here in Nosibe, Madagascar. And I do that because I like sharing with students. I like spending time with them, with them because I know that I am one of them. And I like sharing what I have to them. So the fact that I'm sharing what I have to them it's satis uh, something that makes me satisfied and I'm happy with the job that I do. And also for organizations who come here in Madagascar to help people, and then I like helping them too. Right now we are on the rooftop of Tamana Hostel, and the view is amazing. And I think this is a really perfect place for this interview, because it shows the luxury of Nusibe. Nusibe is really green. 
and uh, yeah, we still have many trees, many forests. That's really important because it's also to sensibilize the, the world that uh, having vegetation is really, really important for for the future of the environment and for the future of the next generations. Well, as you can see around, people are happy at the market, uh, people are happy on the street. So yeah, for me, Mercy Madagascar is a really nice country. If I'm not just talking about the Tamana rooftop, but uh, Madagascar in the general, Madagascar is a really good country because here people, they live their life happily with what they have. And for me that's something really important, like you don't have to to be a billionaire, to have a lot of money or to, to be a, a son of a president to be happy. You can be happy with what you have. Like for example, if I see at my left, I can see big houses and I can see small ones. But whatever people inside, they are happy because they are with the most important people with them. They are with their mother, with their family, with their kids. And that's something small for other people, but something really, really important for Malagasy people, like always be happy with what you have. Nice question. I like that one because unfortunately nowadays young people in Madagascar they don't really believe in the future. Like they just want to, to be rich and uh, have a good future but they don't really have a clear idea about what they would like to be, to be or to do in the future. Me, for example, personally I have many goals for the future. For example, I would like to be a journalist, like a professional reporter in Madagascar or even international abroad, why not? And then I would like to be a professional musician too, because music is kind of my passion. I like playing music, I like singing, it's my part of my life. And then I would even say that it's my wife. <laughs> I would like to be a professional footballer, if I can say that, if I can say that like that, because I love football too. I love playing football. I spent a lot of time to play football uh, during my childhood and even now. Even when I have a lot of time, a lot of things to do at, at the university, a lot of things to do at job, I always find time to, to play football. So maybe I would like to, to, to integrate a club, a club in the future and maybe play football because I like practice in sport. And then apart from that, the, and I say that the last one, but it's the most important thing for me, I would like to do something to help the people in Madagascar to be more developed, especially the people who are less took care by the others. Like I'm talking about people who have disabilities or, or street students, students who don't have a home, students who are, who are at the orphelina. I, I would like to help those kinds of people because we, we, we take care less about them, but I think they deserve to have a normal life and good life like everybody. So if I can do something in the future, not only by giving money or be giving some stuff, but sharing love and sharing things like that to, to show them that they are so important in the life. Because for me, in the life, everybody is important, whether you are poor or rich or whatever your social class, you are important and everybody deserves a good place and everybody deserves to, to be well treated in this world. And if I can bring something, to, to make that happen, then it will be a pleasure for me. Yeah, I like helping people. That's the most important for me. Help people, help, help, always help. Mm. of Travel has played a really, really important role in my life because firstly, they helped me to, to get more knowledge, like how to create uh, your own website, and even every day, I, I learn English with uh, TSAP Travel staff. 
And that's something really important for me. Like, I get new knowledge every day. The anti sub travel has really helped me because I, I help them and they help me also financially in, the, in my study and everything. So anti sub travel is learning, is teaching me some, some good things for my future and I really like that. Apart from that, TSAP Travel is a really wonderful team because I've worked in some places before, like in agencies and something like that, but TSAP, TSAP Travel is really unique because I like meeting people, meeting foreigners and meeting their cultures and talk with them, but TSAP Travel, it is really, really special because it allows me to, to meet new people, mainly from England, but from other the world too. And the fact that they are very open with you and uh, no, no question of uh, race or no question of uh, skin color, no question of, of who is Malagasy, who is British, but they integrate you like if you were one of their, their team for a long time and that's really, really wonderful. They are so, they are so friendly, they are so, so nice, so smiley and the team is really, really good because at the beginning, I was a little bit afraid, like, I am black, I'm African, I'm Malagasy, I will, I will not be the welcome with the team. Then, when they welcomed me in the team, I was so happy, and I see that TSAP Travel is a really wonderful team, and I thank them for that. Like, for me, for example, if I do a job that I don't like, I just do it, but I'm getting bored. But with TSAP Travel, I never get bored. Every day I have fun, every day I have fun. The volunteers are so, 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 so friendly. I like spending time with them and yeah, I'm so happy that they are here. And I think I will not be able to hold my tears when they will go back in England because now they are my friends, but they become kind of uh, like a second family for me, very near my heart and it will hurt a lot when they will not be here, but for the moment they are here. So I try to, to profit the maximum possible. Yeah. Is that okay? okay. <laughs> no, I did. it was the truth, it was the truth. Yeah, it's a pretty good question because I am Malagasy, I am among them, I am among the local people. I see how they live their life, I mean, how we live our life. I see how they struggle sometimes to, to find money. I see how they struggle when they want to learn something but they don't have ways to do it. So. For me and for many of the people that we are going to represent today, TSAP Travel is a blessing from the heaven. Because TSAP Travel is coming here in Madagascar, in OCB, to teach English for free, to help them in their business, like uh, to drivers, tourism, to create a website, to, to make a resume, to make a CV, something like that. Like you have to pay a lot. Like there are people who, who can teach it and who can help Malagasy people to do it, but with money, of course, and they ask a lot for that. But TSAP Travel is coming here and they teach and they share everything for free. And Malagasy people, they are really motivated, and I think that's something really important. So, in fact, TSAP Travel, TSAP Travel is doing an amazing job here in Madagascar and they uh, help a lot of people. And not just talking about with kids or or teenagers or or grandparents, and they help everybody. They help really everybody uh, throughout the, the the amazing job that they do, the teachings, the the help in the community, everything that this travel is doing here has a lot of huge impacts. And I hope that the yeah, I hope that the relationship between NCV and this travel will stay. Uh, as long as possible because it's really really important for Malagasy. <laughs> He's great. I love him and he's honestly amazing and he's so humble about it as well. But he does give the same um, speech to everybody, to all the buzzers that he meets, so he makes you feel really special. And then I've heard him give like the same goodbye speech like 10 times. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't feel as special now, Jamal. But as Jamal mentioned, he mentioned some of our projects. So we have four core projects within what we do. So we have an inspiring entrepreneurship project. So my background is in business and entrepreneurship. Um, so I set up this business and 
I run a marketing agency as well. Um, and one of our goals with that is to help people start their own businesses. So for Jamel, um, he actually runs his own tourism company that does really well. So um, Yasmin, who you can see on the screen with Jamel, um, she works, she's a business grad from Exeter University and she works really closely with him to develop a website, create a logo, a Facebook page, and we pay to print initial marketing materials as well. So we printed him business cards. Um, when I was recently out there, we made a flyer together that he's now gone and printed. Um, and we also point, point tourists in the direction of him. If any of you are Facebook users, I'm a very proud Facebook user. Um, you see all of these um, pages on Madagascar, people looking for tour guides and things like that. I'll always recommend Jamel and we help him with um, if he's got any questions, like whilst I'm here or he needs help with the website, I can always do those things when I'm here as well. And we also filmed a marketing video for him. Well, I say we, Patrick did, who was one of our change makers last year. Um, and that's just one example of a business that we've set up. We also run women in leadership events as well to inspire women um, within Madagascar to be, um, to be more than what Madagascar tells them they can be. And I actually got a lot of pushback from men in Madagascar saying like, well, why, why isn't it for men? Men as well. I was like, well, because men are fishermen and men are tuk-tuk drivers, men are typically taxi drivers, majority of men are tour guides. And I was like, it's just a bit more, you know, there's a lot more opportunity for men that I've seen within Madagascar. And the women that have come to our events, um, we've only done two so far, but they've been really instrumental. We did a CV and resume and cover letter writing workshop. Um, so many women were so excited to go and put those skills into practice and develop CVs so that they could go and get a job. Um, and that's just been amazing. We also have access to education as well. So that encompasses our English language classes, which is one of the main things we do. But it also encompasses, we pay for young people to complete their final year of education. So especially during the pandemic, a lot of people didn't manage to finish that final year between finishing sort of, if you're in the UK, college and going to university. So we pay for them to finish that final step. So in the future, if they'd like to go to university, they have that opportunity, but it also helps them get better jobs. So my EFA, who's incredible, um, Unfortunately, we met him, we were just having a coffee on the side of the road and both of his parents had unfortunately passed away and he'd now lived with his aunt and he was working. His younger um, cousin's sister um, was going to school, but the, the, they call, it's now his mum, who's not technically his mum, but in Madagascar it's his mum, um, couldn't afford for him to go to school. And so we were like, well, let's find out how much it will cost. And that's how that whole programme started. Um, and now he's actually on track to becoming an accountant. And he was just, I think he was bricklaying when we first met him. And we also have an eco-brick project where we do a lot of beach cleans. And I've also realised that most Malagasy people don't have bins in their house, or at least in the Malagasy houses I've gone to, there's, there's not really a bin. The food gets put outside for the cats or the dogs. Um, and the other rubbish usually goes outside or gets burnt. Um, so we do community beach cleans where we pay for people to have lunch and we pay for them to have a soft drink. Um, and all they have to do is come and pick up rubbish off the beach with us. We're playing music. We, in, in our meetings, we go around and we all have to like say a message of what we'd like um, the people on the beach to hear. So we'll all go around and, and give our message in our meeting. And then as we're walking down the beach, somebody with a microphone then says all of those messages out in Malagasy. So to get a bit more of the community involved, and we have all different nationalities part, uh, participating in that. And our last one, we had about 65 people show up, including some people from a university. And then one that's maybe a slightly far away from the community development stuff, but one that's really close to my heart is our animal welfare project, which eventually one day will be an incredible dog rescue in Madagascar. Whilst I was there recently, they had their, their like, they poisoned a lot of the dogs, which is like their own way of like pest control, because they're fixing a lot of the roads in Nosy Bay at the moment, and it's just really dangerous. Um, and they don't really see there to be any other option for what to do. Um, which is really sad, um, and I'm a big dog lover myself. However, rescuing the dogs isn't just for the dogs. My best friend Gladys, who you'll hear from in a minute, who also works for us, she, um, she was bit by a dog when she was younger, and she is terrified of dogs, and I shouldn't laugh at her, but sometimes it is a little bit funny, because dogs love her, but she hates them. Um, and the amount of times we've been walking home together, and dog, because I'm white, right, like, 
dogs can tell I'm not going to hurt them and we have to walk separately down the road because all these dogs are following me and she's like no 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 and we were walking down the road and she screamed and I thought she'd hurt herself but a dog had come up and sniffed her and I want people like Gladys to feel empowered when they're walking around in the dark um, because usually that's when a lot of the dogs come out and it gets dark in Madagascar at 6pm and Gladys teaches English for us until 7.30 so she's definitely encountering some dogs on on the walk home so I want her to feel empowered and feel safe when she walks home as much as I want the dogs to live a a good life as well. So that's our projects. So this was our, these are our achievements from our 2022 pilot project. Um, So I landed in Madagascar and this was a test. I was fully expecting it not to work. (laughs) I was fully expecting people to look at the bazaar, laugh at the bazaar and then I was going to go home and be like she doesn't know what she's doing. And they were right. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I had some good ideas and I had some good contacts. So we started off with English and we continue with English to this day. Um, and I'm not the best English teacher. And I pay some very talented Malagasy people to teach English for me. Jamel is one of them. Gladys is another one. Because I, for me especially, when I've been learning Malagasy, it's the translation. I need you to tell me the English word and the Malagasy word. That's really important for my learning. And what I've come to know is it's really important for other people's learning as well. And I can't always do that. And everybody says, oh, you don't have to speak the other language to be able to teach English. But it's really helpful. And having your own sort of dictionary of like the Malagasy words is really is really useful. Um, so I very rarely teach English on my own now. Whereas in 2019, I would always be teaching English on my own, and nobody knew what I was saying. And if I can draw as many pictures as I liked, and they were never going to understand what the word comfortable meant without a translation. And even if there's not a direct translation, being able to explain it in a native language is very powerful. Um, and as a result, we have our two contractors or subcontractors who are our staff. We also started two businesses. So we started Jamal's business and the vanilla business as well, which is Gladys's company. And we supported five businesses as well. That could be through paying for things, um, helping them create Facebook pages, websites, printing materials, any support that they need. Um, they sort of come to us and they tell us how we can help them. And then we actively try and support them. Um, so we're trying to launch it. Well, we have launched an eco brick project, which is basically, if you don't know what it is, if you get a plastic bottle, you stuff it with plastic. If you make it hard enough, then it's a brick. And then you can use it to make things. Um, and my proudest moment, I walked into this English class, right? And I was like, we're all gonna, we're gonna make eco bricks. Over this next week, start to make your eco brick, bring it to the next class. And the language barrier was so strong, they all looked at me so confused. And I walked away from that class thinking, they don't get it. Their thing's going to happen next week. Come to my surprise when everybody shows up next week for the English class and they've got their eco bricks. Oh, what a moment. And one of them had this ring of like red wrappers, which were sweets. I was like, did you eat all of these? He goes, no, 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 I didn't eat them. I sold the sweets and then I asked them for the rubbish and I put it in the eco brick. I was like, this is great. This is a win. Um, And currently we donate well, locals donate eco bricks to other projects that utilise them more effectively instead of just storing them and them being another problem. And then we've formed a lot of partnerships on the island. Like I said, this, this young white woman cannot do this alone and I wouldn't want to do it on my own and I don't know enough to do it by myself. So we've got some really great partners on the island, whether that's with schools or with Alliance Francaise, that's quite a big organisation across Madagascar, um, Association Miarica, we've got loads which are across the island. Five were formed in 2022 and we've formed some more since then. And then we returned my effort to education and we also support some families as well. So some families we meet that are truly in need and maybe, maybe they're known within the community as needing a bit of support. I, a lot of people say don't throw money at the problem, but it's n- to me it's not throwing money at the problem. It's, it's a way that I can help, and they can do so much more with that money. Like Gladys with her first salary that I paid her, she goes to me, I'm going to buy some lipsticks from Tana, and then I know this woman who doesn't sell anything else at the moment, so I'm going to sell them to her, and then I'm going to make more money off of the money you've given me. And that wasn't my idea, that was Gladys' idea. Um, So sometimes we do give money in that way to people that truly need that support. 
Ooh, another video, what a treat. Uh, my favourite experience, there's quite a few, but ones that really stand out would be visiting Gladys's vanilla farm. We had the plan to go and film Gladys, which is one of the uh, entrepreneurs that we've been working with. Um, and so we got the boat to Nosy Cumber, trekked up to her vanilla farm, which was about an hour and a half up a very steep hill in quite hot conditions and we helped film for the documentary. And then we came back down and immersed ourselves with all the locals of the village and just had a great time. It was really sort of put everything into perspective, look into a life that I never would have seen before. Hello, my name is Gladys. I am 23 years old. I am from Madagascar and I have a plantation of vanilla. Man nga la vanity zengi asa sao, tu ete nga ni asa sao tu. Sache zengi anoti menti mi, surtu omo mani izi manga boka fleur engi, anoti menti mi lam tip ki fleur, isa nanda sananda. Safe zengi vudin la vanilla rek, manga mi fleur atot ka 50, Ça fait que vous avez un nom, 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 vous Fa manga mbotra la vanite nga ni asa sartu sa sartu. Wacha no joti kara toni neti ambaru vatoti. Ano mzen pet kambani am village ang timen timanungati ano unera trant zengi parkura to kambani ang manungati is nanda sananda timen timanganzif. Fiena manganki amadagaskar atizengi sumarch dem tu vlotam ni pei afahain. Sachi mangangi tamtalua is mangang tima zmiya safik. Fa amjoti mangang fa mazmiya safa tiki la asa jabze metaton mangang. Ocha zengi mangang tima zum de taxi, mangang tima zum de bajaj, de mangang tima zum mintinga. Fa asantangu bien zeng niasamni hoteli. Manga no sakara sa chuta fuzenga to manga ifa manga si tia sa diabzenga azo ton manga ngeti sa fe sumar sar sa chwa manga ngi uzkwa manga ngi tima nambadi sumar sa sa iringa izma melunteng. Covid 19 fuzenga ni tonda impact beta fiena ngulu tama daga skara tati surtu na ni nakama noko na zefu zamu vulu na zengi ni tonda tenga ni se impact beta fiena ngaka kara tonza joti na talua zani sa tama hotel na receptionist zaba kani ante zefu ni asa tama hotel de hotel yufu ni asa kufa baga tama ni Covid 19 fuhingi namta cha zani asa ariska joti zaju tisi asa sa fe south from zemi hingi watam vanga Rata de avnori PPN jabin de chas no normal kara istam taluen. A boko kara ton nam nga jami sul baka nyasa tam nutel katra etual manjar mi asam gargot. Mi si tek ti tek ni anta tam talua joa sa tot skanet tam ni kol tara mangefa manjar mi tam ni kol fanzakana. Ar mi si fek tek sasani manjar fa ti tafian ta fek foto efa ti voa efa. Mba bando nek maman roi nanjar efa ti si hasa veri hasa. Nanjar ti ti voa efa ni ukolaj manjar ti tafian. Tenga ni fian tekan marese zita fian ngan ultati. Tanjung nakazengi amni mangar amni futur. Tanjung nakazengi amni futur. Zat yok manga a entreprise nakatumpin. Tara nek mi asamnu fa zat yok manga le entreprise nakatumpin pi di bolam nakatumpin. De batia kwa zeng zao wa mnya marehangi, misi oportunite zao wa mga ampile teksa iri nga de mikre ya sa maru maru kwa nkwa chen le entreprise na kaya info.
Tisab Travel, Rosing Mangap, Tengan Mangap, Zabi, Amni Business Nakati. Such as in Zajuti, Karaton Zajuti, Mangan video, Faro Ed Nanga, Pirun and Denangati, Niant Kurajab, Niant Kufre, Ninu, Nangala Futonga, Nangala Tambo Nangati. Des aimes de quoi, Manga Echechi, Angano Impression, Taratas, Wing as a Vang and Nin Ramumbalavani, Unitulization Nani. À toi en français, à toi en anglais. Des roms, des quoi, mais la mampiante c'est en anglais. Quoi jouti? Des, des quoi, mais la ngabienga compte website. Oui, on a des vagues des bébés coucou. À bas, ils étaient nulou mar mar. Zeng, ils balayent roms. On a besoin de mampiante, on a besoin de website. Des angan publicité radio. Bro, on a besoin de mampi. Alors, on a besoin de financement. Quoi, ro, arcan zé tachando. Faro, on a besoin. Gladys is genuinely my inspiration in life. I've just spent the past month living with Gladys in her very Malagasy house with no electricity, no water, no toilet and it taught me very much what I could live without. It also taught me how strong of a woman Gladys is and as you saw there, last year when we met her she was unemployed. Today Gladys teaches English for us, she's one of our main staff members. She works at Alliance Frances and one of our partner associations. She runs Gladys's Vanilla and she's a freelance tour guide. And her current goal is she's recently applied to go and talk at this big conference somewhere in Africa because she also works as like a part of a first aid association. Um, and that's one of her next big st steps in life. Um, and I've never seen a more independent, strong woman who had to leave university because her par parents couldn't afford it, who lost her job at Tamana because of the pandemic, who was being paid nothing an hour to be treated like rubbish by a French person who was her manager. And she's risen above it all and she's the best person. I bought her a laptop for her birthday as a gift and she's gone from strength to strength since then. Um, I, we also, I also, the company bought her a phone so that she has access um, to knowledge and communication. I've taught her how to Google things because just Googling things isn't really a concept uh, in, Ma in Madagascar, not in the worlds that I'm in anyway. Um, and I also taught her how to use ChatGPT, which she loves because she lives alone. She just talks to it. Um, but yeah, my, genuinely my, my inspiration and it makes me really sad seeing her because I was living, we were spending every waking moment together up until just over a week ago. Um, and she is truly incredible. And I'm almost finished, you might all be pleased to hear. So we're not, we haven't finished 2023 yet, but these are our achievements to date. So we've engaged with over a thousand people. We've done two beach cleans, two women in leadership events. We did a creative afternoon at the Sunrise Centre, which is a disability school in Madagascar, in the north of Madagascar and Nosy Bay. It's one of two in the entire country. We did six upskill workshops. We delivered a Frisbee event to people that work in the mines. We've done 166 English classes. We have three subcontractors hired. We rescued nine dogs. We rehomed them into with local Malagasy people, and then we are setting up a dog association so they can access affordable dog food so that dogs are well looked after. We've launched our animal welfare project. We've supported 21 businesses. We started three businesses this year. We were able to support 10 families, and we did six employability workshops where 50 people attended. And I, I cannot tell you how long I sat in Casanova in Nosy Bay thinking to myself, we haven't done enough. And, that's, and I think that all the time. I think if we'd done this, if we'd done that, if we had more money or if we'd done this, how much more we could have done. Um, and it's, it's a really hard journey. And we only started this last year. But every day I think I wish, I wish we'd done more. But then I wrote down this list, and in 83 days, I think we did quite a lot. So these are our core values. You've heard three of them, but also passion and transparency. You've got to have a passion for what you do and being transparent. I'm really big on transparency. I don't think a lot of organisations in this space are transparent. That was what annoyed me when I was a volunteer. I paid over £1,000 to volunteer, and that, that wasn't going to Malagasy people. That was going to offices in London. It was going to a turtle project in Fiji. It wasn't going to Madagascar. We make sure all of our money goes to Madagascar. And I can't tell you how many people think we're that successful that ask me for a job. I'm like, that's great. 
but I pay for my own flights to Madagascar, so there's no jobs here, but being transparent is really important to me. And our plans for 2024. So these are some of our big projects that are going to be rolling out next year. We're going to launch Sunset Strays Dog Association, um, we're going to launch an English teaching association. There's a lot of English teachers in Madagascar that can't really speak English, I've discovered. Um, so we want to create an association where Malagasy people who are English teachers who maybe need to improve their English or need support with resources or lesson planning, we're going to create an association so that we can all come together and support one another. We're going to roll out a business in the box programme and a mentoring programme as well. And one of my, my loves in life is listening to the Die Over CEO uh, podcast and I, I was showing it to a few of my English speaking friends um, and they're rolling it out in, in, um, or in I think they say all the languages but not all the dialects. So we're going to be doing uh, weekly screenings of the Diary of a CEO podcast, which is an entrepreneurship podcast um, in French um, for local people to come along to, um, and just providing that access to opportunities, really. Um, and you might, might be pleased to hear or disappointed to hear, depending on how interesting you found my talk, that that is the, uh, the end. And yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. Yeah.